Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to follow up on my buttons making video by demonstrating how we can change icons in our button components. I feel like this is very important because I see a lot of people do it the wrong way and not just from an ease perspective, but they actually create a lot of hidden layers, which is not something you want in your file. So I'm going to demonstrate the wrong way and then I'll show you the right way. So feel free to skip to the right way if you're not interested. So firstly, they would have a button. I'm just gonna hold down the option key, click drag to copy. And they would just delete the vector of an icon and replace it with another. And what I mean is with all the icons that I download, I have a boundary, which is 24 by 24 and a vector inside. So the good thing is that all my icons have the exact same size, which makes it easy for me to switch from one um, to another. So when I actually delete that icon with its boundary, um, the button is designed to readjust to be in the middle, which we don't want. So let me undo with Command Z. Instead, I'm just going to deep select and select on that vector to delete it. So I'm gonna go Command, left click. So deep selection just means you select the exact thing you wanna select. You can also go Command, right click to open the selection uh, list and you can just pick what you want. So that vector, I'm just deleting the vector, but keeping the boundary. And you can check this in your layers panel. I have my boundary still on, but my vector is deleted. And you can see here, it's not actually deleted. It's actually just turned off. The reason being is when you're working with components, you can't actually add or delete anything, but you can only change properties which is why people normally just delete it and just add something on top. So as an example, they would get a new icon. They would make the color what they want it to be. So I'm going to use this gray and we know the size is 16. Um, I can just check this one. We have it 16. Yep. And they would just approximate the location. So I'm going to bring to front using the right square bracket, or you can also right click, um, bring to front. But obviously I couldn't do that because I would have just clicked on this button, which was in front. And they would just try to align it like that. And even worse, they would probably group it so that it stays together. I would definitely not do that because like I said, you have this hidden layer where Eventually, if you ungroup all these elements, you have just have tons of hidden layers everywhere. There's actually a easier way to change the icons. So let me just get rid of this garbage. And the way that we do that is by making variants. So variants is just a way where you can swap out one thing for another, which sounds like exactly what we want to do. So for my first icon, I have icon forward slash basket and my second icon forward slash trolley. And the reason people just name it like that is just for organization. So for example, if I was to export these, Figma knows to put trolley and basket in a folder called icon. But also if we make these into a variant, we can put them into a variant called icon. So the way that we do that is we just select our two icons on the right in the properties panel we have a button called combine as variants. Pretty simple. And what it's done is it's made a variant called icon and we have two options. We have basket and we have trolley. And we wanna make sure we're using our main components to do that. And just to double check, we can go into our button. We can right click and go, go to main component. And there we have it. So that's how we make sure. The other way we make sure is just to check the icon in our layers panel. So we have that solid fill diamond, whereas this one, which is a copy, is a hollow diamond. 
So why do we want to make a variant? So now that we've made these connected by this icon variant, if I go to this icon, I have this new variants panel in my properties panel. So property one, basket, I have my two options, basket trolley. And there we have it. We've successfully changed it to a trolley without having to delete or hide anything. So if I make another copy of this button, I can change it back to basket. Really cool. The best thing about variants is also adding things very simple. It just works like a frame. So you know, obviously it's a variant set when you have this thick dashed purple boundary. I can just make it a tiny bit bigger. And all you want to do is you just want to download new icons, create new icons, and just plump it, plump it in when you need to. So I just downloaded this icon from Material Icons by Google, a great resource for downloading icons, which I will link in the description below. I just downloaded their SVG and just literally uh, dragged and dropped it into my file. I'm just going to rename it to be shipping. And the reason why you'd want to make sure you name everything very clearly is so that when someone is working out what variant they want to use, it's pretty straightforward what they want to use. So maybe we might even change this to be uh, shipping truck. And all you have to do is click and drag it into this variant. So I'm just going to make it a component first, just in case we want to edit um, multiple um, uh, copies of this icon in one go. Just click and drag it like you would dragging into a frame. And just to check, we can click on the icon set. And there we have it, three variants. So now if I was to make another copy, if I was to click on the icon in the properties one, I should see three options. And there we have it. Shipping truck. Very simple. Hopefully my explanation was pretty straightforward and it hasn't turned you away from creating variants. It's actually very simple and it's just an additional step in your workflow, but definitely will save you a lot of time in cleanup in the future. That's all for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.